in the name of my ancestors, Peace, fam, and always welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snuck Number 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to first thank so much that you would um, give me the honor of listening to my few words, allowing me to have a few moments of your time, and I am so happy that I will be, or I have proven myself worthy of your ear. I am happy that you would give me an opportunity to speak my opinion to you. Now, we all have opinions, and that is wonderful, and that is well, and we all have the right, I feel, to have your opinion. But whenever we form an opinion, it should be to the best of our ability. But many of us, we have opinion, but we don't form it to the best of our ability because to form an opinion at the best of our ability may mean that we become a hypocrite or we betray a belief system that we have adopted. So our opinion is not really that of our own. Our opinion is rooted and based upon what somebody else sold us. So most times when I have discussion or maybe debate with another person, I'm not talking to that person, I am talking to their version of what they have been taught. Their version of what the Bible said, their version of what the Quran said, their version of what Barack Obama said, their version of a thought other than their own. So when they give their opinion, they are not giving their opinion. They are giving the opinion of those of whom they have decided to follow. Now, if that which you follow has your best interest at heart, if that which you follow has the best interest of humanity at heart, then we don't have a problem. We should not even be debating. We should not be discussing. We should not be arguing. But the argument comes and the debate comes about because there are ideas that these ideas are selfish. They have one agenda. What is in the best interest of Christianity? What is in the best interest of Islam? The best interest of the United States? But the best interest of humanity in general is ignored because we have selfish and arrogant people that will say out of their mouths we love humanity, brotherhood and sisterhood, but when you look at their activity and you see how they behave and how they do things, you will see that their agenda is only for themselves. So of course, if I am pro-humanity, if I am beyond color, if I am beyond gender, if I am beyond all these isms that have entrapped us, then of course I am going to run into opinion that hates what I'm bringing because this opinion is not selfish, this opinion is not arrogant, this opinion is not envious, this opinion is not of my own and it is formed not with a selfish agenda but it is 
a opinion. It is ideas, a philosophy brought about due to the love of the human life form, regardless to color, regardless to gender, regardless to age, class, creed, and all those things. And I'm not pretending. I'm not using love and peace as an illusion for my own self. Uh, my own self uh, benefit. So we have all these fakers who hide behind peace, hide behind love, hide behind charity. They use charity as a way to convert people to their side, to promote their own agenda. Otherwise you can starve, otherwise you can die. They don't care, but if there's an opportunity to get a new body to support their way, what they want, not what humanity wants. What all benefits humanity as a whole because they're not interested in, hum in humanity as this thing called white supremacy has broken up the human family and divided again because prior to white supremacy they were divided in tribes and nations and countries in all kinds of ways but the ultimate division that has really torn up humanity and its effect is all over the globe. So with a tremendous grip on humanity is this thing we call white supremacy. So if you're not Caucasian, if you're not light-skinned, you are in bad shape. The lighter you are in this world, the better you are treated if you are dark. You are considered ugly and something to throw away, disregarded. But we can use your body and we can use your flesh to take care of the light skin or the white. And that in its utmost horror, the example was over 400 years or more. I know that my ancestors in this nation under these white people suffered for over 400 years. But the dark people have suffered perhaps thousands of years under the colonialism, the terrorism, the original terrorism of the European coming from up out the caves in hillsides of Europe, gaining knowledge and civilization from dark people and once they became or think they became civilized then they wanted to force their religion, their gods, their culture, their way of doing things on the darker people and since they were a minority they used what we call white supremacy to put themselves on top of the world and that's where the problem remains even to this day because there's nothing wrong we have to have a leader we have to have somebody in charge. The problem here is that those who are in leadership positions, the world powers of today who are Caucasian people who rule this world, you are corrupt. Your world was not made by honesty. Your world was made by lies and deceit, rape, incest, murder, pedophilia, and I could go on and on. And that's what we have and exists today. And then you have become a skunk and you have stitched the rest of humanity and now in their minds rape, murder, lies, pedophilia, sex addiction, alcoholism, everything that you are you pass that down to the rest of the human family and not a whole human family have become sick and instead of accepting your sickness you have become in denial because you have lapses where you think that all is well. Sick people, anyone who has cancer, anyone who has, ha who has suffered any type of sickness can tell you they don't feel ill all the time. A real good example is people 
with diabetes. On many occasions, they feel good, they feel great. And so you hear those in the Caucasian world, the children of those who were enslavers, those who were murderers and rapists, thieves. Now you are in a lapse. You continue to do what your fathers did, but because you, you have a lapse in your sickness, you believe that all is well. Uh, that's, we're not the same like we was back then. You were sick then and you're sick now. Because if you wasn't sick now, I wouldn't be right here before you. Well, maybe I'm sick. <laughs> it's a possibility. But you see, your problem in calling me sick, your problem in calling me some racist of which black people can't be, but in your ignorance, that's what you say. But as far as I'm concerned, I was locked up by white people. The government of the state of Missouri. I was locked up for 10 years. So they studied me. Now watch this. Now listen to me good. White people who did not like me who called me an insane criminal. They studied me for 10 years. You don't know nothing about me. They studied me for 10 years. They wrote notes. They recorded my every action, my behavior for 10 years. So you who do not know me, he's a racist. He's insane. But you don't know nothing about me. For a mere $350, if you send me $350, I will be happy to send you all of my records pertaining to me. All of it. Because I don't have nothing to hide. At all. And the records was not written by me. It was written by the sheriff's department, psychiatrists, psychiatric aides, and a lot of folks that didn't give a damn about me. So none of it is coming from me. I wrote nothing. And you can examine these papers yourself. But I'm going to tell you if you want to if you want those papers I'll be happy to uh, send those papers to you. Excuse me, the telephone is throwing me off a little bit. But uh, it's hundreds and hundreds of sheets of paper talking about yours truly because I was studied by government. I was studied by educated people, highly educated people, people in high places. And this is what they say. No, this is what they don't say about me. Hundreds and hundreds of pieces of paper. And I'm, I've read all of it. Nowhere in that paper, in all this study of yours truly, I did not find nowhere and I was examined by maybe a, a close to a hundred people from big shot doctors to low uh, low end psychiatric aids. Okay. But none of this writing is about me. But I was study and my behavior and what I'm about was recorded for 10 years by people who don't like me and within the and who are psychiatrists those who study the mind <laughs> they study the mind 
And this is what they don't say about me. Out of all these hundreds and hundreds of paper, they never call me a racist. There's nowhere where nobody written where they write, uh, this guy don't like white people. Nowhere. I don't like the white people who are doing this evil. It just so happened they are Caucasian. I might say that. And they know what I said. And it was clear. Because I got along and have always gotten along with Caucasian people. But I'm going to speak the truth. And if you don't like it, that's on you. Have nothing to do with me. I'm going to call a spade a spade. If you did it, you did it. If you didn't, I'm not going to say that you did. But many of y'all get angry because you did. Just deal with it. Not my fault. Just deal with it. But I was never called a racist out of my whole 10 years. You tell me why. Since you can call people racist and you know so much. Why did not the government, nobody in the government, no government employee of the state of Missouri call me a racist? Explain that to me. You can't. Because you mad because of what white folks did. White folks did what they done and what they're doing. History verifies. I didn't write your damn history. Your action of which I have suffered because I'm black and I know what you did. And I know the reason why I was locked up so long was because I was black. Not only because I was black, because they wanted to show that I wasn't so smart. They don't like smart people and they don't like black folks. They wanted to show me who the boss was. That's what that was all about. They never said I was uh, racist so I hated white people. And I'll tell you another thing that they never said in all these hundreds and hundreds of paper. They never called me a liar. Oh, he's a habitual liar. He lied about this. He lied about that. They never even said I was mistaken. So, the government, the government who studied me for 10 years never said that I was a liar. They never said I was a racist. How do you come to that conclusion when you ain't studied nobody? You can barely read and write. You don't even understand when people speak perfect English. You some silly folks. And that's why you can't do nothing with me. I'm not here to mess with children. I wish these children stay on my page. I'm used to dealing with people that got some sense, even though they're evil and wicked. The state of Missouri, you, you and nobody out here, nothing close. You have no power. You're not as educated as the state of Missouri or no government. Period. You're not on my level. I can deal with the best. I can deal with the federal government. I can deal with the state government. I can deal with these high class smart people. These little flippity floppity folks on YouTube. You ain't nothing to me. You are lucky I give you any type of attention. You don't mean nothing to me. You ch childlike. You little kids to me. <laughs> those those uh, know who I'm talking to because they watch these videos and I'm talking to your ass so your best bet is to keep your ass hiding behind a picture because you don't want to deal with this in person Especially in a public forum. And you already know that. So your little kid ass, your best bet 
is to hide behind your mama's skirt, hide behind a picture, because here you don't have nothing coming. And smart, intelligent people, somebody with any type of sense, know not to mess with me. Because if you come here, you got to come strong. I take no prisoners. I destroy your baby mentality quick and efficient. The only thing you do is repeat what somebody else said. You have no thought of your own. And the little thought you do have of your own, you don't think what the damn. And I'm going to talk about our thinking process. This thinking process is called critical thinking. We call it self-thought. The black man and woman in America, we don't think with a damn. We're so caught up in emotion. Some of you think that you are critical thinkers. Some of you think Believe that you think for yourself. If you have to believe in something or somebody, you cannot be a critical thinker because you've allowed something else to form your thought and your opinions. The black man and woman, the descendants of slaves in America, we have a severe problem with what some call mental masturbation. I call it scholarly gibberish. I listen to all these radio broadcasts, these programs. And with all due respect, with all due respect, it's the same old, same old. People being impressed because somebody can quote all kinds of versions of quotes from the Quran or what Marcus Garvey said or what Malcolm said. So what? So what? What's the big deal? Speaking like you know something but saying nothing in essence. What happens, and I don't want to be nasty, but I'm going to, we're going to have to, I'm going to try to give us a, an example. When we speak of mental masturbation, when, I, when we speak of scholarly gibberish, trying to make ourselves sound intelligent. When it comes to mental masturbation, when you masturbate, that is an activity to bring you temporary pleasure. And in the act of masturbation, there is no chance that life can be produced. Ah! Did you hear what I said? In masturbation, there is no chance that life can be produced because there is no intercourse between the male and the female so that the sperm can meet the ovum. So that that chance is 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 absent. So in masturbation there is no life. Life can not be produced. And masturbation brings temporary pleasure. So in scholarly gibberish in mental masturbation, 
We get hot and we feel good. We on all these radio blog talk shows. We everywhere on the streets. And we just are talking and we're talking. We're masturbating. But it is not bringing no life. And all the great speeches. We are in the church. We are in the mosque. Or maybe we are in the pool hall. Talking and running our damn mouth. All this talk. All this knowledge. All this masturbating. Makes us feel good. But it brings us no life. Now to be fair. And to speak the truth. At one time. These beliefs. These ideas. These philosophies. At one time. They did help us. They brought to us life. Because we with no doubt. Were the dead people. But somewhere. In our development, we became comfortable and began to go backwards. And when they killed our leaders, because we don't think for ourselves, because we're trying to become carbon copies of our leadership instead of developing self and being who we are. Although we are influenced by Malcolm, we should not want to be Malcolm, even though we're influenced by Marcus Garvey or John Henry Clark or Ashra Quasi or, or even today, Sarah Sudan Seti or myself or whoever. You should not want to be like us. You should want to be like who you are. So when the leaders die or when the leaders become corrupt, then we fall down the damn steps and go backwards. And in the civil rights movement, because now we can drink at a, a faucet where white folks drank. Now we can sit on the toilet white people sat on. Now we can lay around in that nasty ass hotels with bed bugs. And so forth and so forth. Now, and so now we can have our Negro face on television. With our, talk show, our, our talk show. We play basketball. And now we've gotten a little comfortable. And we're like George Jefferson. We're moving on up. We finally got a piece of the pot. That's not what Elijah Muhammad sacrificed and died for. That's not what Malcolm sacrificed and died for. That's not what our ancestors sacrificed and died for to get a piece of some damn pot. We don't even know what kind of pot it is. They sacrificed. They suffered and they died so you can get your own pie. Bake it yourself. Not in a white man's kitchen. That's why we sit right now eating food in the white man's kitchen. Being educated. That's why we don't love our ancestors. We're educated in the white man's school. We love all our love for our people and love the hell out of our enemies. Because you're not a critical thinker. You're still a slave. And you're a slave saying black power. You're a slave saying assalamu alaikum. You're a slave saying hotel. But now, instead of the white man enslaving you, you have become obsessed with, with the masturbation of your own black hands. Do you understand what I'm saying to us. And so we buy tons and tons of DVDs. And we go to all these lectures. And there's nothing happening because mental masturbation, scholarly gibberish, don't produce life. Somewhere in this development of what we call black struggle or liberation, Somewhere, we went backwards. Somewhere, we said we're moving on up. We finally got a piece of the pie. And we become comfortable with a piece where we should be seeking a whole pie. A pie that we cook. Not out of somebody 
else's kick. We become lost in a thinking process. And I give you an example. When you are driving a car, your mind is supposed to be focused on the road and that vehicle. Your goal is to get to point A to point B safely. Especially if you have passengers because they depend on you to get to point A to point B as safely as possible. So as you drive, you're not supposed to be thinking about what's on the radio. You're not supposed to be thinking about what's going on on the streets. You're supposed to be thinking about and aware of your surroundings as you drive. But you're not supposed to be thinking about those things. So, the one, so the one who is able to always stay focused on their driving, it's very rare they will have speeding tickets, they will be involved in accidents because they understand the responsibility and their thought is on driving that vehicle in a safe manner to get from point A to point B. But we allow ourselves to be distracted. As you drive. Somebody is trying to put their hand in your pants. As you drive. You see some woman with a big butt. Now you should be aware of these things. The person that's trying to put their hand in your pants. You need to tell them to get the hell out of here. And stop that. Or get the hell out the car. This is a, dis under a distraction that can cause everybody to get killed. You see the woman with the big butt. But your mind is not supposed to be distracted to her and her big ass. You have to stay focused. A big butt has caused many accidents. You must be aware of the children playing with the ball on the side of the street because they might run out in front of your car. Be aware of them. Be aware of what might happen. What might happen? Then that's, that's the future because it did not happen. But there's a chance that the children on the side of the road that ball could go out of the street. So you're thinking about the future. You're way ahead. Now, if it happens, that's cool, but you're ready for it. That's the type of mentality we have to have. And as we move forward, you're not distracted by the sign. You don't look at a sign. You read the sign so that you will know about something. For instance, there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken sign. Okay. We see the Kentucky Fried Chicken sign. We know about it. Our mentality is to continue to make sure that this vehicle gets from point A to point B safely. But you get distracted if you look at the Kentucky Fried Chicken sign and think about, wow, I think I want some Kentucky Fried Chicken and some mashed potatoes and gravy. Now you become distracted and placing your mind somewhere else other than what you're doing can cause you to have an accident. So here we are, the descendants of slaves in America. We have filled our mind with distraction, with feeling good, because that's what scholarly gibberish is. That's what mental masturbation is. It's a distraction. That causes us to get off the proper course. To stay in a path toward a goal. And we have all kinds of goals. This person doing that thing and that person doing that thing. 
if you represent and want what is good for black people, then why aren't you including everybody? Because everybody, all these 40 million black people in this nation, everybody not going to, uh, everybody is not going to be a Muslim. They could care less about Egypt. They could care less about we was Hebrew Israelite or more. You're not going to make all these for because I know I'm not going to do it. I will never be a Muslim. I'll never be a Hebrew. I'll never be a Moor. I'm not going to be those things. But I'm a black man in a racist country. We come from the same people. And I want to join you to get this beat of our back once and for all. Those other things we can talk about once we get free. Y'all niggas don't want to be free. You just want to <laughs> masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> Temporary pleasure. And that's not what I'm about. And that's why I get some of y'all upset. You get angry. Because we should be having sexual intercourse. The male should be finding the female. The male should be romancing the female. Loving the female. Showing the female that he cares. That's how we should be romancing one another. But we don't romance one another. As soon as somebody says something you don't like, that nigga, I'll kill you, nigga. Showing you how infantile and silly you are. Don't you know that during the Revolutionary War. Do you really believe all these white people love one another and agree with every damn thing? No, they didn't. But they had a common purpose and a, hop, a common goal. They knew, they learned how to set aside their differences for what they view was benefit to themselves. Even the white race as a whole. They knew how to uh, compromise their differences because if you, y'all historians, y'all know so much, white people, if you look at their history, they kill a lot of white folks. White people kill white people and force their religions on other white people. They raped a lot of White women, they did the same thing to themselves as, like they did to dark people. Because all of these, this group of white folks had a different agenda than this set. And when they came into power, those, those who did not have the power, we're going to make you be like us. Same scenario. But then they sat at a table. And they looked at the world and saw everywhere they went, all these dark folks. And they was the minority. So they came up with this plan. And we call it white supremacy. And they compromised their positions. Even though they did not like one another. And many Caucasian people even write in the comments. I don't know where you get all this white folks love each other. Because they don't. But they know how to stick together for a common purpose and common goal. If y'all Negroes start killing white folks, they'll, start, they'll come together and forget all their differences. And y'all got a problem on your hands because they will unify against those who are trying to cause them harm. But y'all niggas that claim, oh, y'all claim that you want to be free. You won't do it. And that's why you're still a slave. You're a slave. Black power. A black power slave. A being eaten slave. A wannabe Hebrew slave. Well, that's what Hebrews were a slave. So you have, after thousands of years, you ain't even gone up the ladder. You was a slave then, and you're still a slave. 
I wouldn't be bragging about my position in life. And so forth and so forth. You have to get your mind right. You have to begin to think for yourself. Be a leader to yourself and stop depending on these suckers that's getting rich of your blood, getting famous of your blood, and you get nothing in return because mental masturbation, spiritual or scholarly gibberish don't produce life. And that's why all of you, that's why the black community, even the so-called black conscious community, all of you that think you're awake, you still just as dead as anybody else. In fact, you worse because you think you are asleep when you are sleepwalking. And when you sleepwalk, it looks like, i say it again, when you sleepwalking, it looks like you're awake. But you sleep. So you don't want to get on my case. Because I'm striving to move forward. And your ass in the past. What the Moors did. That's past. What the Egyptians did. They, they have not built a pyramid in 5,000 damn years. What y'all tripping off of? What are you going to do? Talk about all this spirituality and sciences. You can barely hold a job. What are you doing outstanding? Nothing. Because you're caught up in masturbation. In the pleasure how it sounds like. But when somebody challenges you to show the substance, to show the life you produce, you want to get angry. Because you caught up in the temporary pleasure. Well, I'm sorry to tell you. I want to see the life that you're producing. I want to see substance. Instead of all y'all talking. That's all Negroes know how to do. You talk a good game. And many of you, you should stop wanting all this talk, speeches and lectures. So what? Now what you going to do? What you going to do? Doing nothing except masturbating. And masturbation don't produce life. And it brings to those who are involved in that type of activity temporary pleasure but it will give you in the end long-term problems ask any doctor what happens when you masturbate excessive obsessed so it is no shock to me that these who are so-called black conscious these so pro-black, they are still in a slave-like condition. You really don't want to be free. When I was locked up, I heard guys talk about, I want to be free. I want to do this. But when you, when you saw their actions, you did not see their actions. When somebody want to be free, willing to work and do anything to get them shackles off me, but y'all comfortable, you got your internet, you got your pretty clothes, you're not suffering. See, that's why the white man know he got you, no matter how pro-black you are. And then... This is the messed up part. Is that we've had all these ideas for a long time. So the question arises, do they work? A person is called insane. 
a person is called insane when they attempt to do something that don't work and they expect that for some reason it should work when it is clear that it fails. All these ideas, see that's the reason why you have to be mentally masturbated why you are so obsessed with scholarly gibberish because you don't want to let go of that which has failed in order for us to get free we have to come up with new ideas new ways of doing things a new way of thinking you've never heard nobody talk the way I do never and whether you know it or not, I'm saying the same thing you are, except I have advanced. We, this thinking, have evolved. You have to become something your enemy has never seen before. And stay on the offensive instead of the defensive. Right now, the reason why we got to say, well, the white man do this. And the white man do that. Because we are always on the defensive. Once you become on the offensive instead of the defensive, then the white man will start complaining. But see, it would be hard. Listen, if you do it right. See, it would be hard for him to complain because he says he wants us to be independent. He says he wants us off welfare. He says he wants us to be a better people with his mouth. Really, he don't. You know he a liar. So now, the shoe or the ball is in his court. Force him out into the open and show that he's a devil. Show him that he's the wicked because he don't come out. Because he don't want us to do good. He'll come out. And then everybody can see without a shadow of a doubt. There is no arguing. You'll see him for what he is for real. Or. Or. Maybe that would be the beginning. Of a brand new world. Where we can live in harmony. And have equality and justice and freedom for all. One or the other. Either the devil going to come out. Or those who say that we can be a, a humanity. Where this rainbow coalition can be a reality. But as long as we are stuck in the past. Why don't y'all build a pyramid sometime? You got all this knowledge. Build a damn pyramid. You ain't doing nothing. Producing nothing. It makes no sense. And our people. That's why. Our people in general. Are getting sick of it. They heard that stuff before. It don't work. And you can keep it. If you can evolve and change. And get fluid and flexible in your thought. Think for yourself. Because when everybody starts thinking for themselves. Many new ideas will be born. But when you wait on one stupid leader. One particular person. And your leader don't respect those with different minds. You end up a sophisticated evolved slave like we are right now. Sophisticated, evolved slave, want to be free, you'll never be free. Because, because physically, you don't have no change, so you're comfortable. And freeing your mind is much more difficult because you think that you are feeding from a source. That makes you free. White was the enemy 
at one time and still is. But what has become even more detrimental is our, uh, is our obsession with the past and mental masturbation instead of seeking substance. And the reason why we don't have substance is because we don't have no success. We are here today because of the success of the past. But we have yet to put ourselves in a position to produce substance or success so that instead of becoming obsessed with masturbation, we will be having intercourse with our people and producing life. So it's up to you what you what you want to do. I'm not going to suggest to us to do the moonwalk and keep going backwards. You don't understand what I'm saying. Well, some of you do. But you are uh, caught up. And you have become loyal to insanity. That which has failed us. Besides talking about our own personal failures. Many of us are jealous of one another. We're envious. Arrogant. Greedy. There's a lot of problems upon ourselves. And we get jealous and angry at those who exhibit the attributes we claim we want. You should be happy that somebody looks like and behaving like a righteous person. I thought that's what y'all want for us. But when somebody actually is doing that, you get mad, angry, and upset. Because you have failed to do so. And maybe you could do it if you uh, seek discipline on yourself. And respect another brother and sister. Respect another opinion. Learn how to compromise with somebody. Instead of always fighting against somebody. You want to be free. If you want to be free. Then take the white man as an example. Because they don't. All of them don't like each other. But they know how to sit down at a table. To get the job done. What is, best, what is in the best interest of Caucasian people. That's why black have suffered and still suffer. They are smart. They are wise. Even though they are evil and wicked, they are slick like a fox. Slicker than a fox. You should look at them as an example for ourselves. The opposite. Not be a black version of them. Because little by little, whether we join the fray or not, their world is falling down. And they know it. And the only way they can live is to put their mind in the dark. Or in the black. And y'all, if I didn't know no better, I thought I'd be talking, I thought for sure I was talking to some racist Caucasian people. Because that's your mentality. You caught up in color. You caught up in gender and class and all these isms. When you should tr be trying to be free. If you hooked up on black, you're still a slave. You hooked up on whether God is a male or female, you're still a slave. Because God, God don't need gender. You only need male and female when you're trying to reproduce. God is self-replicating, I thought. Don't need a penis, don't need a vagina. Don't need flesh and blood, that's what I thought. But what I really thought was that I thought 
that we wanted to be free. And I don't hear freedom on all these blog talks. I hear scholarly gibberish, mental masturbation. Thus, it produces nothing. Gives you a good feeling. Oh yeah, you feel good temporarily. That's why y'all so angry. You go from a good feeling and then it don't take nothing for y'all to get angry. But that's how it is with temporary pleasure. You should be seeking permanent pleasure. A permanent place in this life. By reconnecting yourself to that which brought you into existence. And you, and you don't need a pastor. It's all in you. Everything that you need, you was born with. When you come into this world, you didn't need to borrow a heart from somebody or a leg or arm. Now some of us, in rare cases, we are born handicapped. But in general, everything you need, it was given to you. You don't need a pastor, some minister. You don't need some prophet. Or whatever to give you a connection to God. You have your own connection. If you stop being a slave. Because in order to make you a slave. The slave master has to cut your umbilical cord. To the mother or to the womb of the universe. And make you bow down to him. And then give you a fake connection. A false connection. To your oppressor. So now we need to. Break that connection. From the oppressor. All his ways. Everything about him. You got to disconnect yourself. Everything. Everything of this world. And create something new. You got a brain. Use it. All of us together. Self thinking. We can come up with new ideas, new ways of living, new language, a new culture, a new destiny. Not only for us, but for humanity, period. If you cut your ties from the oppressor. Everything in this world, let it go. Everything of the past, learn from it, but you got to let it go. And recreate yourself. We who are called nothings, we can now make somethings out of ourselves and become greater than all those things we bragged about and masturbate to from the past. Embrace the black woman. Shake and hug your brother. Let us get our children and love them and teach them. And nurture them in the right way. So that they will think for themselves. So they can reach higher height. And not be bound to the flesh. Or be bound to the ground of this earth. Because all of that. Out there in space. All that around you. The seen and the unseen. You can master it all. Once you stop being a slave. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Talik Even Rogers wanted to talk with us for a few minutes. Thank you so much. I love us. I love humanity, but black people, y'all number one. Because you're the key to this change. If you stop tripping on the past and all this fiction and fantasy fairy tale stuff that for some reason we call spirituality, spiritual, spiritual, ritual to the spirit or worship of the dead. How the hell are we a living people worshiping the dead? The dead can't do nothing for the living. They are somewhere else. You should be trying to live, not die. Although we don't have any chains, with black power or without black power, we are still
still dead. Enslaved by white people. Enslaved by black people. The ultimate most perfect slave. Slave on the top. Slave on the bottom. Now you understand what our problem is. Can you break the grip of death? And stop worshiping the dead being spiritual. Because spirituality is supposed to be the spirit leaving the flesh or the earth and rising to higher heights. And we have yet to show that we are capable with all this spirituality. How come we are still bound to the flesh? We are still slave to the flesh and we are still bound to the earth. How come we are still slaves in the mind to our oppressor? We don't want to let them go. You got to let this world go. You don't need nothing from it. Period. You should be happy to let it go. Not talking about it. Black power don't stop you from being a slave. Be who you are. You are beyond black power. You are beyond a color. You're not like your slave master and his children. You want to be who you are. And just live life. And stop tripping on these titles. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Christian. I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Moor. All that stuff. Stuff that keeps you. Enslaved. Because that's not what none of you are. Just live your life. Just like the tiger. Just like the bear. Just like the bees and the elephants and the ants. Just live your life. And treat another person like you want to be treated. Or do you want to continue the ways of the world. And these ways of the world is what caused our problem to begin with. Those who are bound to material things. The pyramid. Ain't nothing but some rocks. Some stones. So what? Well, look how they did it. Some rocks. That's all it is. All y'all talking about is material things. That's some rocks. Some boulders. Some earth. Go beyond those things. Go beyond them. You can be. In reality. What those Egyptians. Imagine. That's your destiny. That's our destiny as a people. If we stop being slaves. And stop holding on. To this world. That should be allowed. To pass away. Let it all go. Become something and somebody new. As a people and as individuals. I don't want to be what we was called in the past. I want to be somebody new. And when you come here, you don't know how to really talk to me. Because I'm a little of the old. Because I learned and I came from the old. But I'm striving to get my mind to go and direct it toward that. Which is new and awesome. And then those who made mockery and fun of you and degraded you. Just like the scriptures say. Our enemies. They will bow down. At our feet. But not like a master to a slave. But they would bear witness. Because they knew you was trash. They knew that they had made you garbage. But now you stand strong. And they can witness in reality. The power of God. Male and female. Together. He and she. Them. 
Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. Just wanted to get down my chest. Love you, all my friends and subscribers. Thank you for keeping this ministry uh, strong. Um, hopefully, uh, in the future, we got some things in the works. And uh, I hope that you help me. We don't want to masturbate and produce no life. We want to partake in an activity that can do good for us and move us forward instead of keeping us stunted or take us backwards. This is your brother Talik Even Ra. This was and is the Rally's Temple on Earth.